play to win is always focused on the future, never enjoying the present. And, and like entrepreneurs almost brag about play to win. I hear people say, I'm playing to win. But the problem is it's playing to eventually win, not enjoying the process along the way, yeah. not enjoying life now because it's all when they accomplish something. But guess what? They accomplish it and then they go, now what? It's yeah. never what they thought it was going to be. And they're always on that treadmill of life. Garrett is a New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestselling author, serial entrepreneur, and he is a happy hustler. And he has a new book out called Money Unmasked. I got the pre-released advanced reader's copy here. Thank you for sending it, by the way. And I'm excited yeah. to dive into this, man, because you actually talk about how you can unlearn, unlock, and take back control of your finances and life. Yeah. And you know, you have a counterintuitive approach to making money, keeping money and growing your money that I've really bought into. And a lot of the happy hustlers that I know I've recommended to you because the proof is in the pudding, like what you're putting out there and how you do it, it, it works. So let's get into it, man. Give, give me the genesis behind this book. Why did you even write it? Dude, I wrote every word in that book, which I did not write every word in my early books because I was afraid to write. Like, what if mm. it wasn't good enough? What if it didn't sound right? What if I, what if I didn't say things in the best way? I had like a lot of fear. And so I had co-authors and ghostwriters, but this is a piece of who I am. It's an expression of it. And I know that money is something that people are confused about and their relationship to themselves is actually the same as a relationship to their money. So what they avoid, what they earn, what they rush, what they, what they try to collect is something that is usually within them that they haven't resolved. And so I felt like we need to bring a conversation that was uplifting around a topic that's normally boring, demonstrative, destructive, and, and garbage. And so like unmasked means like understanding who we are. And ultimately in the end, what we're really looking for is love. But unfortunately money's been the blinder and had us confused thinking that's what love is. If I have enough money, then I'm valuable. If my net worth's big enough, then I'm going to be better off. Or, you know what? A lot of people list money as the number one reason for divorce. It's not really money. It's that they stop dreaming because money becomes a limiting factor. And so I wanted to show people in a very practical way how they could profit from their ideas up front before ever having to invest or borrow. I wanted to show them how they could plug financial leaks rather than scrimp and save and budget. I want to show them what their money persona was so they could opt into a much bigger vision and better game than being limited by the money. And I wanted them to get to the place where they understood who they really were and what they were capable of. So it comes with a lot of emotion, passion. And I went nuts for a while and wrote too many words. And then I cut it back. It took me seven years to, to get to the point of putting this book out. But I'm going to give it 70 years if that's what it takes to get this message to the world, because I think mm. it's an important one. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's the deal. Dude, I love it. And it, you really can tell, like, I've read your other books. You know, you had Killing Sacred Cows, which was a New York Times, Wall Street Journal bestseller. And, you know, you that book was phenomenal. It was, it, it, it really, I think, broke a lot of barriers in the financial game. Like a lot of people thought one thing and then that just showed them a different way to think and act. And I feel similarly about this book, you know, where it's like, you, you know, you, you really break it down in a way that, everyone can resonate with one of the, you know, the different personas, right? Like, and, and technically there's like the shadow personas and then the winning personas and you, you help yep. really. And, and there's really, there's four winning personas and there's four shadow personas, right? Like, it's like, it's very simply laid right. out. Talk to us about those personas. Let's, let's kind of go through them. And, and, and for all the happy hustlers out yep. there, like in enough detail so that they can be like, oh, that's me. You know, and, and so we can give them some like tactical like steps for each maybe on the back end. But let's first hit the personas just so people can understand. Yeah, and I remember early on in my financial career, I started in June of 1998. And I always wanted like money personality quizzes or I always wanted like, and I could never find something other than this thing that was really basic saying there's, there's savers, there's spenders, there's avoiders, there's givers, there's the masters. And I was like, that's a little bit simplistic and not informative enough. So this took me a long time to kind of uncover and figure out, but the four shadow personas, it begins with the miser. And by the way, nobody likes to be called a miser, but this is my family. I mean, <laughs> they came over from Italy and they pinched pennies and they, you know, they, they're so tight. They get the diamond. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, <laughs> they are misers and they play the game called preservation. 
in the game of preservation, they end up with funds that they're never going to spend because they're mm. addicted to holding on to what they got. They'll spend 10 hours to save 10 bucks because they get a better deal. They'll know where the cheapest gas is at all times. They'll, you know, order order water even if they don't want to drink water because it just is less money. They'll double coupon clip and go without and eat stuff even after it's expired. Like that's the miser. The miser is all about how do I eliminate, cut back, reduce, scrimp, save, sacrifice, delay, defer. And I live the majority of my life as a miser. And Same. thank God my wife, my wife was like, dude, my family's favorite pastime, Carrie, is making fun of Garrett the miser because my kids <laughs> didn't ever know that miser, but my wife did. Like our first Christmas, you know what my gift was to her? A 99 cent clearance bin phone case that didn't fit her cell phone. Wow. But I was like, no, if you Killing just it. rig it this way. And she's like, this is what you got me? Or when her dad was like, you know, you could live in our basement rent free when we first got married. I told my wife that. She's like, we could live there sex free if that's where you think I'm living. Like, I was a miser, dude. It was all about elimination. And I was obsessed with eliminating money to the point where I wasn't present. I wasn't creative. I hmm. wasn't a good value creator because it was all about what I could lose, hmm. not what I could create. And one of the things, if you're a miser, is realize no one shrinks their way to wealth. True. No one shrinks their way to wealth. Wealth is a game of value creation, expansion, serving, solving mm. problems, and delivering value. So on the other hand, so a miser usually is isolated and selfish. But if we go to the winning persona, the opposite of the miser is the mindful manager. The mindful manager is detail-oriented. They're efficient. They're great at improving things. They, they're good at you know, like reducing waste and enhancing ideas. But that's about collaboration. That's about co-creation. That's about abundance. And that's the difference. People are in their shadow persona when they're selfish. They might not see themselves as selfish. They might just see themselves as surviving. Mm. But that survival prevents them from thriving. So there's the miser or the mindful manager. That's the shadow and winning side of one of the four personas. I'll, I'll pause and let you give your feedback and tell me about your miserly days. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, well, that one hits home. And, you know, I hope everyone out there can like think about this and be honest with themselves. But dude, I even still catch myself where it's like, ah, uh, you know, I don't really need an appetizer tonight at dinner. You know, it's like, it, it, it's, it's not, you know, I'll, I'll be fine with just a bit. You know, it's like, it's so deeply ingrained in us. Even when you have money, sometimes you have to like, beat it out of you. And I totally resonate. And I love how you break it down because, you know, you, you, again, just put it in such a simplistic way. So we got the miser and then we got the mindful manager. And by, and by the way, like the miser and mindful manager, like just, just realize when you bump up against drama, trauma, or difficulty, it's likely to rear its head. Mm hmm. Like when I was doing the comedy special, there was a bunch of bills that I didn't realize when I went to Costa Rica, didn't get paid. And I came back and I was, I was like, they were six figures of bills. Well, I was like, oh, so immediately that day I was like, hey, why do we have the air conditioner up so high? Who only <laughs> drank half of this drink? Like the miser just came out for 12 hours, right? Which was like, we've got to cut back and save, which isn't really going to make a big difference. Yeah. But it was just this ingrained thing. But then now the key is I have awareness and I'm like, oh, wait, I'm being a miser because I feel threatened for my survival. Mm. Let me get clear about how I can create value, serve others, solve problems, and move forward and mm. be a better steward over my gifts rather than hoarding and being afraid. So I, we might not be impervious to this. It's just once we have an awareness, we can make new choices. Yep, love that. Let's hit the second one. I, yeah, second one is not a political affiliation, but it was the best way to describe it as a conservative. Mm -hmm. A conservative plays the game called accumulation, sometimes even might call it retirement. And they end up with funds that they can't spend because they're afraid they're never going to have enough. So they're hesitant. They're overly analytical. I think of a lot like a Midwestern person that wants to tell you they know better for your life than you do, like a professor, right? Like, now, Carrie, what you've got to do is start putting that money in the retirement plan when you're young. And you know what? You're going to have a child. You need to start that education fund yesterday. And it's too late. So you just got to delay gratification. You got to defer happiness because one day, someday, you're finally going to live that retirement dream when you're way too old to do it. 
you know, and that's unfortunately kind of how they go about living life is in a very judgmental state and Mm. concern for others, not because they're pricks, just because it's, it's the mantra of that kind of framework. So that's the shadow side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I'm sure everyone can think of somebody in that, in that sense too. Yes. Uh, I could think of people like Dave Ramsey is like the father of conservatism, right? Like true. How could you be so stupid to get a mortgage? How could you be so stupid to ever put a dollar on a credit card, you idiot? Like, it's really judgmental at all times. So yeah. um, on the flip side, though, on the winning persona is the planner. The planner's stable. They're thoughtful. They're a strategic person. They're instrumental for organizations that want to plan for contingencies or monitor the effectiveness and efficiency of any initiative. So what they're thinking about is, how and when something happens like almost every billionaire has an amazing planner and mindful manager that helps them execute Hmm. and without that execution they're merely a dreamer that's lost and 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 they might as well have dementia when they when you hear them talk because none of it seems like reality but you're not you don't have as many famous mindful managers and planners because often they're engineers orchestrating something behind the scenes or they're cfos bringing all the finances together. Um, But they're so critical that without them, almost nothing gets done. Mm. So now we've got the miser or the conservative. And on the flip side, we've got the mindful manager or the planner. Now, what you got to realize is in scarcity, the miser and the conservative play not to lose. They play not to lose. They just like want to hold on to what they've got. They want to set as much aside as they can. Like, it's always about what do they stand to lose? If we flip to these other personas, they're more play to win. Mm. Play to win is always focused on the future, never enjoying the present. And and like entrepreneurs almost brag about play to win. I hear people say, I'm playing to win. But the problem is it's playing to eventually win, not enjoying the process along the way, not enjoying life now because it's all when they accomplish something. But guess what? They accomplish it and then they go, now what? It's yeah. never what they thought it was going to be. And they're always on that treadmill of life. Oh, dude, you're preaching to the choir. That's like literally what the happy hustle is all about. As you know, like putting the happy in your everyday hustle, both personally right. and professionally. So like play to win is hustle without the happy. That's yep, play to win. Hustle that, without the happy. But like when you've designed a game worth playing, when you put value first and money is no longer the primary reason or excuse you would do or not do something like Montana masterminds for you, you win. You enjoy the process along the way. So the striver is the first person playing to win. They're impatient, busy, malcontent. They play a game called status, and they think they could just work harder to make more money, but they inevitably burn out. That's the Mm. striver. Now, on the flip side, someone coming from value creation and a winning game and serving others and solving problems is the creator. The creator is an entrepreneur, an artist, an inventor. They lead with innovation and ingenuity and pave pathways for more people to add value together. Mm. So, you know, now if we go to the the last money persona, it's the high roller. The high roller is the shadow persona. They play a game called opportunity. They, they, they're kind of, they can seem narcissistic, maybe like a one upper or a name dropper. Um, They could be a ton of fun. But at the same time, they can be really dangerous because they cut corners and take unnecessary risks that leads to short-lived riches. On the flip side, though, is the catalyst. You're a catalyst in my life, bro. You're such a catalyst. Catalysts, uh, they think big. They're movers and shakers. And they're connectors. You're always connecting me to people, right? So they think and play big and show us ways we can win together. If you have catalysts in your life, life gets better. When Kerry finds out I have a book, he's like, you're coming on the happy hustle. When he's got the Montana Mastermind, he's like, I'd love to have you there, right? When, when he sees somebody, he's like, this guy's in finance. I think he could, you could benefit him. I'm going to connect the two of you. That's a catalyst. And if, if you have a catalyst in your life, life gets better mm. because they can position you properly. They can introduce you in a way you can't introduce yourself. And ultimately, though, if a catalyst is stuck in the high roller land, then high rollers can be braggadocious. They show a car that they don't even own. They're the, these yeah. are the kids yeah. putting something on, on TikTok or whatever, Instagram, like, look at this house that I rented that is yeah. not even mine. Look at this private jet that I didn't even fly on. Those, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the high roller. Yeah. 
yeah, the furus, the fake gurus out there, you know, it's just like, I think we all know about them. And, and fortunately, I feel like people's BS meters are higher than ever. So they can like smell the snake in the grass or, or like seek it yeah. out. But, but yeah, man, th these are so powerful. And thank you for the kind words with the catalyst. I, I don't even like, that's not even, it's something that's just almost in, intuitive. I feel like it's just naturally, I always try to find the, the win-win synergies. It's not like, oh, I hope something great happens for them. And then it comes back to me. It's like, if you make introductions or connect people or, or try to be a catalyst with that perception, it, it's it's never as effective as just like selflessly serving, you know. And I know we talked about that in the mastermind. Yeah, I'm but... like, I'm not a selfless. <laughs> I'm a selfish. <laughs> That's a whole other topic. Even I though you're not, buy my book. I don't just want to give it to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, this is amazing. I do want to recap them. Okay, so. We talked yeah. about the, the four shadow personas, and then we talked about the four winning personas. So like everybody out there right now, and, and I guess before we recap them, is it possible to be more than one? All four. I've been okay. all four in my life, bro. Okay. Like, okay. Let, me, let me tell you that. Like when I was the miser, I'm on my honeymoon, right? And I take my favorite person in the world, my wife, Carrie, on this cruise, except for the miser, me doesn't want to spend any money. So- <laughs> she's like hey babe i want to buy this bag i'm like why do you need a bag they gave you a perfectly good plastic bag when we got on the cruise <laughs> now my wife is pretty smart so she made sure she was photographed with that plastic bag in every single picture on our honeymoon dude. or later on when i got a little bit more knowledge about finance i became the conservative but i ruined mm. date night we would go on a date and she'd be like oh, i'm gonna order this glass of wine i'm like oh have you never heard of the massachusetts investor trust fund the first ever mutual fund created if we invest a dollar one dollar at its inception over 100 years ago would be worth one thousand two hundred and seven dollars and 33 cents so yeah like she didn't order the wine and dinner was over and so it was date night right yeah or i've spent most of my time as a striver hmm. um you know trying to build an inc 500 company working and flying everywhere and trying to validate that i was successful and valuable and important at the expense of my family to the point where when my wife had her uh, when we had our first son I left the hospital early, even when he was hooked up to wires and machines. Mm. I went back to work. Mm. My wife didn't even hold him while I was gone because she was stuck in recovery and scared. Wow. See, so as a striver, I put work over my family. I abandoned them. Yeah. Just because they didn't fit my striver schedule. Wow. That's the thing about these shadow personas. And, and you and I, you know my high roller day a little bit. Maybe I told you about it. Like, yeah. I'm not a car guy. I'm not a car guy, but my partners are like, you've got to get a nice car to attract high-end clients. So I bought a Bentley, and I took a picture of my Bentley at the Salt Flats in all black, put it on social media, and someone's like, look at this pretentious douche. And fair enough, I was a pretentious <laughs> douche because I once didn't get it parked up front at a hotel, and I looked at my wife, I'm like, what, what's wrong with them? She's like, what's wrong with you, you douchebag? So... <laughs> Yeah, that was my high roller day. And, and dude, more embarrassing, they put this on the cover of a magazine with me and my Bentley. And I said in the article in 2008, I said, you know, I've had so much success. It's just about paying it forward and giving back. I, d I have more money than I could spend. And within two months, $8 million of my net worth was flushed down the real estate <laughs> toilet to be like, hey, Ted, you can't say stupid things like this. We'll just, yeah. we'll just beat you to death as the universe so anyway yeah. those are those are my i've played different roles based on situational moments of our life right mm. but usually drama or trauma will push us back to our original one yeah oh man i can so resonate with like a little bit of all of them and you know the the one that like really resonates for you out there listening it's important to think about the antithesis right the opposite the winning persona so you have the miser or the mindful manager. You have the conservative or the planner. You have the striver or the creator. And then you have the high roller or the catalyst. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.